Welcome to this episode of Above the Clouds. Today we will look into uh, the question of divine empowerment. Once Krishna left the planet, Arjuna lost all his magic powers. He had been requested by Krishna to bring and some of his queens, a major portion of them, uh, from Dwaraka to Hastinapur, where Yudhishthira and his government would protect them. Now, on the way, some ordinary cowherd men, who were dressed like bandits, rushed out of the underbush and uh, uh, defeated Arjuna, who tried to protect the uh, queens, and actually were able to kidnap them. So after this had happened, Arjuna reflected about it and said, Tat vaidanusta ishavasarato hayaste so hangrati nipatayo yata anamanti, etc. I have the very same Gandiva bow, the same arrows, the same chariot drawn by the same horses, and I use them as the same Arjuna to whom all the kings offered their due respects in the past. But in the absence of Lord Krishna, all of them, at a moment's notice, have become null and void. It is exactly like offering clarified butter on ashes, accumulating money with a magic wand, or sowing seeds on barren land. With these uh, examples, Arjuna wishes to point out that they are no longer in any way effective. All his, his bow, his powers, his chariot, his whole personality had become ineffective, uh, as if sowing seeds on barren land. Nothing comes out of there. Don't we sometimes feel in our lives unworthy, unqualified, useless, and not able to actually do anything of value? I think we all can relate to these feelings. Mm. Srila Prabhupada writes in his purpose, purport, as we have discussed more than once, one should not be puffed up by borrowed plumes. All energies and powers are derived from the Supreme Source Lord Krishna, and they act as long as he desires, and they cease to function as soon as he withdraws. And then he says a little later, material civilization without the blessing of the Lord is a child's play only. As long as the parents allow the child to play, it is all right. As soon as the parents withdraw the child, withdraw, the child has to stop. See, children, go on ignorantly of all that has been provided for them. If you ask them, where did you get your food today from? The child will say, I got it myself. I went to the fridge. And I got it from the fridge. The child at this stage is not aware that it were, was his parents or were his parents who gave that food into the fridge or on the fruit basket on the table. 
and as uh, soon as the parent uh, uh, parents withdraw the food then the child will understand oh there's another cause outside of me who provides the food in the same way uh, as a little child we sometimes forget that everything even what we think and what we remember everything we use is provided by the Lord can you create a sim simple seed it's in the genetic code within the seed mm. uh, that makes uh, a lemon tree grow like a lemon tree or a mango tree like a lemon uh, like a mango tree but there need to be many other factors there the light of the sun the minerals in the soil the carbon dioxide that's in the air and uh, the water which is coming from the salty ocean and then is distilled by the action of the sun to uh, you know good mm, nourishing mm, uh, water that can help a seed to grow um, uh, in the same way we often uh, forget that it is uh, uh, due to Krishna and his energies that we can do anything uh, just like the seed uh, uh, wouldn't be able to do anything without these factors we are also not able to um, uh, function without these uh, things uh, that are provided by Krishna and the most important thing is the Atma the very self and the Paramatma who's just next to the uh, uh, soul huh? they are all coming from Krishna they are not created by you <laughs> and so on mm, yes mm. When a person lives in this mm, absence of God consciousness and feels entitled to use uh, the gifts of Krishna without acknowledging that mm, who gave these gifts, then there's only one uh, thing uh, that can help the forgetful soul to awake, and that is when Krishna withdraws these things. Mankind gets on its knees <laughs> the moment Krishna decides to withdraw his gifts. And then they pray, Oh God, please help me. You're the only recourse that I have. But as soon as uh, <laughs> everything comes back again forgetfulness also comes back when I was in London this time I heard a joke it was about a man who was on his way to downtown London uh, to go to a very important job interview he really needed to get that job to provide for his family and um, take care of the mortgages for the house so anyone who has been in central London looking for a parking place knows it's impossible to find one so as he was driving around uh, and the time for the job interview drew closer he became more and more desperate so that finally he called out to uh, God oh God please give me a parking place only 30 seconds later he found a parking place right before the company where he had to go and um, give his job interview so when he saw the parking place and parked his car 
he <laughs> turned to God and said, it's all right, it's all right. I don't need your help any. Uh, I, I found a, a parking place myself. That does not happen to us, that Krishna first has to send some problems, has to withdraw his mercy and then maybe we wake up and turn to him. No, a devotee uh, is uh, often turning to Krishna, not just when he wants something, no. The art is to turn to Krishna before, because then he rarely needs to withdraw uh, his energies or his gifts. This morning I was reading in the Bhagavatam a little different point on this. Prabhupada wrote uh, in the fourth canto, chapter 22, Prabhupada to text 36, we should know that our material activities are just like childish play. Children may play on the beach and the father will sit and watch this childish play. The construction of buildings with sand, the construction of walls and so many things. But, fi but finally the father will ask the children to come home. Then everything is destroyed. I think Prabhupada uh, refers here to the incoming tide who goes over the uh, beach and uh, destroys all that which the child has built up there. Mm, so mm, for a devotee of Krishna it is important that while Krishna allows him to uh, do his mm, uh, work or his activities or so on, mm, uh, everything in the end is uh, taken away by death. Only the Goloka Vindavan planets where Lord Krishna lives, uh, that stays on. And instead of becoming attached to the gifts that Krishna gives, to the freedom he grants us to do our little, live our little plans, we should become more attached to uh, the Lord who gives the gifts and to his planet. And we should make an effort to use the time which we have here, mm, uh, not to waste them in pious activities, economic development or sense gratification, but we should concern ourselves really with approaching the Lord in the eternal spiritual world. Now the question might still be in our head, but who, where was it that was able to defeat Arjuna and then kidnap the queens? And we hear in this verse it were some cowherd boys or cowherd men. Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur informs us that these cowherd men who acted just like bandits were none other than Krishna himself. Krishna him, himself wanted to show Arjuna, yes, you have a powerful bow, yes, I have given you mm, an authority and uh, respect, uh, but really Arjuna, these things are all temporary and he wanted to fix the mind of, or divert the mind of Arjuna away from these gifts and uh, to him the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore he appeared as the cowherd man who showed Krish Arjuna that without Krishna 
everything is null and void. I thank you very much. See you for the next Above the Clouds.